Hey everyone, welcome to the Austin Downbeat. I'm Kat, your host. Thank you so much for being here and watching another episode as we approach the end of the year, my second year of doing this. I feel very thankful on this week of Thanksgiving for all of you and really appreciate feedback, sharing, subscribing, and all of that stuff that goes along with all of this. The ultimate goal in all of the things that I do here is to shine a light on the beautiful and beloved musicians in this town and what they do, and most importantly, what goes into what they do from a very human perspective. And I think that this conversation that I'm bringing you today with Scotty Blanco does just that. I have a wonderful, vulnerable, funny, deep, self-deprecating um, conversation with him. Um, Scotty plays with two of my favorite musicians separately. He plays with Brian Wolf and the Howlers. Um, I'm sure you've seen perhaps my, inter my interview with Brian Wolf. Um, maybe you've seen Brian Wolf and the Howlers out and about. They are so fun to watch. They put on a great show. Equally fun to watch and also so talented is Cece. And um, Scotty plays with her as well. They just had their very first ACL experience. Scotty talks about that. It was emotional and I was there and I felt emotional. And so we talk about that in this conversation and it gets a little emotional. <laughs> and <clears throat> It was just something really, really fun to see and really uh, cool to watch. So you get to hear about that from his perspective. Um, I just am going to let you get to it. And a, a quick reminder before I pass it on to the conversation is please check out, we have this Thanksgiving week of November 21st through the 27th. We do have some people playing around town. It's kind of a, a thinner picking kind of week. Um, but if you go to Instagram at Austin Downbeat on my handle there, you will see uh, very clearly written out people that are playing for each day um, here in Austin. So be sure to check that out and give a girl a follow. Um, trying to hit those thousand, uh, thousand followers before the end of the year. Let's see if we can do it. All right. Without any further ado, uh, my friend Scotty Blanco. All right, here we go. Scotty Blanco, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you on. Happy to be here. This is, this is awesome. I feel like I discovered you dressed in teal. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is accurate. who's that guy? Who's that guy? And I saw you playing with one of my ultimate favorite people on the planet, Brian Wolf. And I was just like, and ironically enough, the first time I saw you uh, was at the place you just got back from was at, at Guero's during That's Frenchie. Right. Frenchie Smith had this thing for South by. So I went to that and I wanted to make sure to catch you guys. And that's when I saw you for the first time. And I know I'm being long winded, but I want to get it all out. That's when I was like, holy shit, these guys put on a performance like you're not just good to listen to like you guys are really fun to watch oh awesome yeah thanks do you know that you are are you do you talk about that and try to be fun to watch or is that just what happens when the four of you get together I think that's what happens when the four of us get together I mean and to kind of put it more personally I just like it's been since I was a kid anytime I'm performing I'm on stage it can be seen as me trying to take the limelight, but it's just the, the, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, the angels or the demons take over. And I just, I, I, I go nuts. It's, it's a place for me to, it's, it's my safe place to be fully self-expressed. And so to be long winded about it, that's, it's kind of bit of column A, bit of column B. Yeah. So, so cool. And I, I, I love that you said that. And I love that you get to have a space like that. Think about how most of the population that, you know, people that we see walking around that we bump into each other do not have a platform to be fully expressed. Right. What yeah. a different world this would be if we yeah. all had that. It is. Yeah. It's definitely, I'm very grateful to have, be able to have that outlet. Yeah. Take us back to little Scotty Blanco. 
<laughs> I know that you learned to play guitar, I think, when you were 12. Yes. And what people don't know is I actually started playing viola first when I was 10. Oh, okay. And, and that's what I started with. And I learned guitar alongside the viola. And there's there's more guitar players, I feel like, than there are viola players. That's what my parents thought, too. And so kind of just going like, well, I guess I'll, you know, I won't really make a career out of guitar player, but I can, I can be, I can play viola. And I loved it. I love the instrument. Um, but that took me, I ended up going to the, I went to UT Austin for my music degree in viola and recording technology oh, and interesting. just played guitar through all of that. And I kept, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I don't live with many regrets in my life, but I, I kind of think I maybe should have in college just switched over to guitar because that's what I've always wanted to do. Mm. But, but little Scotty, yeah, he he started on viola first and then just obsessed about guitar throughout all of it. And then he heard ACDC Thunderstruck. <laughs> yes. It, yes, absolutely. That's right. I brought my original guitar out during that Brian Wolf gig. Oh man, yeah, that was a, that was a trip to be able to play that in front of that many people with that guitar that I've had since I was 12, you know. Dude, it's, it's wild. It's wild. Dude, the crowd went nuts. And you guys nailed it. I mean, that intro, I'm just watching your fingers going like, uh, <laughs> like he's trained for this. <laughs> That's so funny that you said that too, because like it was this kind of surreal moment playing that, playing Thunderstruck. And I remember being in my living room, playing the DVD of ACDC live at Donington and that intro and sitting in middle school with my buddy, Mark Cartagena. I'll never forget. <laughs> He was sitting on a piano bench and I was like playing the guitar while Angus was doing his thing. And I was doing the little like Angus walk that he does yeah, yeah. in the living room. And we're just like totally geeking out. It was it was so cool. So I, I remember like flashing back to that in real time at the show. I mean, yeah. What what does that do for you as a, as a human being who has chosen to pursue this and spend you know I would say most of your time actually doing this type of thing what does that do to you to have moments like that that really kind of I'm guessing sort of connect back the circuit to sort of what we 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 dream of and we hope and we think and we plan and we prepare mm -hmm. and then to be able to connect that circuit back to the beginning what does that do for you as an artist man it's it, it's you know it's it some could look at it like, oh, yeah, I'm just playing a cover. But like for for that moment to just do that and to say, screw it, like, let's play an ACDC cover at this really cool show of releasing new music. Let's play mm -hmm. this just balls to the wall, heavy rock and roll song. And I, I think, yeah, that was just really cool. And to, and to like put it into that music, music's always a connection. It's kind of like we're not to get super woo woo and surreal here, but like um, we're all connected. We're all connected beings. We are one entity. And like the, to have that moment looking over at my bandmate going, Oh, you, you obsessed about this as much as I did when I was a kid and you lived in New York and I lived in San Antonio, Texas, but we still had this moment mm. and we got to bring it mm. 20 okay. some odd years later in at the show and share that experience with each other of a found thing that brought us to the guitar in the first place. Mm. That was, it's, it is a really very like cherishable moment that mm. is kind of unforgettable. Yeah. Besides the crowd, like next to crowd and everything, like just sharing that moment with somebody else was really fun. Yeah. Moments like that make all of this craziness worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. Always. It, and it's like in that moment, you, I forget the imposter syndrome i forget all the times i didn't think i was good enough all the times all like all the hard work it's just was you just i just got to be mm. just got to be in that moment yeah that's so beautiful it makes me so happy for you thank makes you i'm happy that you get to have that and that you're hopefully learning the more you do it to let go just a little bit more and release and surrender mm. just a little bit more to know that you deserve to be in the room when you walk into a room, when I then, so fast forward, I see you play with Brian and then I'm at 
Tequila 512 to go check out Cece. And who's there? You are. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I know this is going to be good because like whenever you're in the room, I just feel like, all right, stakes get raised. Like it's just, it's just really good. You know what you're doing. So with that imposter syndrome, I get it. I mean, we're all human. We get, we get that, but you got to know, dude, like you are so good. I just feel like when you're on the stage, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> like It's going to rock. <laughs> that is, that is such high praise that I did. I don't ever expect to hear and it's not to be self-deprecating by any means but you know it's i just i'm just working and i'm yeah. I'm doing the work and especially in in these moments where i'm on the side on the side man it's it's my job to do my best to interpret someone's vision and dream and i'm just hoping that i can create that for them in that moment yeah, I think you do a great job. You know, personally, I've seen you up close with both of those and I, I acts and I, I think that you do that so well. Talk a little bit about I was able to see you up close and personal at ACL. What was that like? Was that the first time for you playing ACL? First time. Okay, Absolutely. so yeah. walk us through that because that had to have been crazy balls. Yeah, it <laughs> it was all very fast. And yeah. I really did my best to be cognizant of slowing down and taking in the moment and being present and trying to like be forthright and creating memories and like locking yeah. things in and like taking still frames of the day. And I remember very little of like the morning and cause it was just so fast. Like, okay, get to tequila five one two. We got to get fitted for, I mean like CC, Oh my gosh. Like, and that's why what I love about these two people that I play with is that they're two of the most hardworking people. Mm -hmm. And that's not to disparage anybody else in Austin who is also busting their ass just as much, but to see what they're doing. You get to see themselves. the behind the scenes. You you yeah. get to really see that. Yeah. But it's like how the way Brian just is always on his computer and always sending emails and always talking to people and always just being so genuine about everything. And then Cece. Mm -hmm creating the image finding people and like honing them in or like just like the base of tractor beaming them into her life to create the best ver vision that she can create like we had a freaking stylist we yeah had a stylist that took our measurements during a rehearsal and was like okay well i collect vintage clothes for a living i have some stuff i think would fit you guys and like styled us to the t yeah and we looked fabulous everybody looked fabulous you did and so yeah so like it was that you know we go in get our clothes okay now let's load the van okay let's do a little video let's go and we're and we're just going 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 and we finally get parked and we're just kind of waiting for the golf carts and i just got to slow down mm -hmm. and go okay we're getting close we're almost there and then again carts start coming and eric the drummer uh and mike the keyboard player and i were on one we're taking we're all taking the gear in one cart and we're just kind of just there having a good time i'm like filming like the cart going by and stuff and it's all very fast and heavy and then we get to the stage and we walk up the ramp i'm sorry i get a little emotional here um, and i just got to look out into a stage i never thought in my life i'd play yeah that's when everything slowed yeah to this moment of oh my god me as a little kid spinning just practicing vigorously till three in the morning punk rock music when i'm 12 you know like yeah. with this guitar that's not meant for punk rock music but like just all the things i learned led up to this moment it, it's still i just get choked up about it because yeah it's really it's really weird because i don't see myself as someone who was meant to play that stage and again it's not i don't intend to be self-deprecating it's just it always seemed like a pipe dream just something that didn't think was going to happen and so to sit there on the stage i mean and espen the art stylist in, saw like just me tearing up and crying like just bawling out crying and he just walked over and gave me the biggest hug and then eric gave me a hug and then mike gave me a hug and it was just it was so that moment was it will be locked in my memory forever just to see to be on that big of a stage yeah and to see this vast tito's tent like 
yeah just area like just getting to revel in like oh my god like like I, i've made it and all i can do is work harder to, to 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 play bigger stages but this was a dream that literally came true and mm. i not many not a lot of musicians get to experience that and the fact that i did it's it i, I hold i hold it dear in my heart yeah that's beautiful yeah makes me so happy that you got to have that and then you guys filled that tent yeah and that's what like i watched on the from the side and i felt emotional too watching you guys because you know i i get it i know that this is a big deal and i'm watching and i'm just i'm watching everyone set up and they're you know acl crew is quick you know you oh got my gosh. drum set and the gear on rollers and they're just shifting things and it's really really tight that clock is running <laughs> like they're mm -hmm. really good yeah but all that's happening and there's not you know the, the the first couple rows of people are starting to stack and the you know you can see that's like the, your your people yeah and the wonderful thing about a music festival is that every single body walking around wants to see and hear music mm -hmm. and so i just knew as i was watching and i was just getting the chills and i was watching you guys look at each other and set up and sound check and then i'm like they're gonna fill this place and you guys yeah. did. And it was by the end of it. I mean, how did that feel by when you guys are standing out there in a line saying, you know, your last kind of bow? Yeah. What did that feel like compared to the very beginning? The first, I mean, the first time in my life, I felt like a, pardon my French, but a fucking rock star. Yeah. I was like, this, this is, I was like, this is what it's like. I yeah. get it now yeah I, I get I get this yeah 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 you it was it was super cool that. yeah it was I was so happy for you guys I want more of that for all of you yeah me too and it's it's it was funny because like I I tend to get super introspective and really look within and just kind of think about things a lot and it was one of those things of like oh I get why like the rock stars of old like in the 70s and 80s and 90s like they so many people dove into such hard drugs and drinking and partying it's just because it's they've got to that moment they have this snapshot of an hour and a half or 45 minutes and they get this adrenaline rush that's kind of incomparable it's like it like you can't explain it I mean, it's hard to explain even now. Like, I felt like a rock star is the closest thing I could get to. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I see why people keep chasing that dragon. Yeah, I was going just harder things. And when you said, "I feel like a fucking rock star," I was like, "And that's the dragon. That's yep. what everyone chases." Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing that popped into my mind. Yeah, that yeah. makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Just don't do drugs, people. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. It, it's not. It's you're not. You're not going to get back there unless you play the next stage. Yeah, <laughs> that's, just that's literally practice it. your guitar more and, and and yeah, just become better and better and better at your instrument. Um, well, I'm so happy that you had that experience, and I'm so happy that I get to talk to you so soon after. You know. Yeah. Um, for sure. So it's super fresh, and and we get to see each other again. You also have your own thing going. Didn't you just release from Scotty B in the hive? You just released, I think, is it your first single? Take it's it my first. It's my first single okay. in my first, um, it's my first single, my first song released under my name. Yeah. Um, I had a band still technically do. We're kind of on an indefinite hiatus, but I had a mm -hmm. band called finite fidelity probably since 2014 2015 so me and my best friend ryan monahan started the group as a duo in 2015 evolved into a four piece went through a couple guitar players and then had our iteration and then we just played and just hustled and toured had one tour and then released two albums uh we and you know we because of covid it took forever to release the second album that we did um and that was like a, that was a really great experience, and, it, and I still intend to have that with those guys um, at some point, you know. And I'm just kind of exploring this because 
writing so writing in a in a in a situation of four dudes in a band where you everybody's contributing every you know i the way that the process worked if i remember correctly was me or it'd be, it'd be some person of the band would go hey i have this idea tim would show a bass part Ian would show a guitar part or ryan drum part or me a, a guitar part and one of us would bring that to the table and all the rest of us would like gather around like like the knights of the round table and <laughs> You know, look at this piece of art that's being created and go, we we must forge this to appease the elders kind of thing. And we would sit and write and create songs from just something very small. And but it was always like, OK, I have this idea to compliment this idea to compliment this. And it was just this well-oiled machine. But it, it kind of, you know, writing wise, vocally and lyrically, it was. All ethereal. Mm -hmm. like everything I wrote was it was all very authentic but it was like I'm just going to create a story kind of mm -hmm. like um if, if you're familiar with James McMurtry you mm -hmm. know one of one of the like the the godfather of writing perfect stories mm -hmm. in songs it was just like but ours were weird and like and I say that with with very very lightness but like we I wrote a song what's one of our favorite ones called Merchant where it's about a guy who essentially loses his mind in the desert and like the gods essentially create a sandstorm and he loses his mind and you don't know if he's dead or not by the end of the song so it's kind of like that thing mm -hmm. so it's all very ethereal very story oriented but this scotty b and the hive stuff it's it was the first time i've actually had to hold a mirror up to myself mm -hmm. and okay this is me mm. i'm not always gonna have a band behind me if i'm just sitting in front of a microphone with an acoustic guitar what do I have to say? What do I have to say? And mm -hmm. the best things I can say are what is within me. So pretty much every song I write, except for Take the Dive, has a one word title. And I'm kind of trying to keep it that way. And I'm I'm not going to rename it, but I should have just named it Dive. Mm -hmm. But it all has a, a, a theme with that's, that's a concept in my life. Um, mm -hmm. So light is about um the relationship i was in of me being very depressed and anxious and her being my light and mm -hmm. then uh there's a song um that i wrote called heart which funny enough and i, I think she'd be fine with me saying this but it's about cc mm -hmm. her going through a tough time in her life yeah i wrote about essentially just my experience of my friend just kind of shutting down and not yeah. knowing what to do about this tough time, but not really opening up to friends to be able to feel safe around anybody to open up. So mm -hmm. heart is about that and just opening up her heart to her friends around her. And mm -hmm. so it's, I, you know, all these songs just have one word titles, um, yeah. but it's all, it's all just a, yeah, a mirror to my self experience. And I think again, going back to that single consciousness, we're all one. We, none of us are alone. So whatever I'm going through, probably someone has gone through some the same or similar. Mm -hmm. So that's how the only way I can re relate. Yeah. And I love the authenticity piece. I love that you're in that season in your life, which I think we all kind of get to for one way or another, for some reason or another, where we really do finally look in the mirror and we really do kind of know ourselves more, um, you know. I don't know how old you are, but the forties are great for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 32. So I got a little bit of time. Oh but... shit. Okay. <laughs> well, just you wait, buckle up, Scotty. Forties <laughs> <laughs> are amazing. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. They really are. Noted. They, they really amazing. are. I feel like the number one rule is know thyself. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I think by forties, you really do start. And hopefully, hopefully you're getting that in your thirties. I know I didn't, but yeah, you kind of like, you just, you know who you are, you know what you need, you know what you want, you wouldn't know what you don't want. You can look at yourself and tell yourself the truth, which mm -hmm. I think is so powerful. And as a writer, I mean, your relationship with the truth should be, you know, really solid. So um, I love that you're in that season. I love that that's coming out of Thanks. you. Yeah. So Take the Dive is your first 
release. Congratulations yes. on that. I mean, Thank you. that has to be, well, you tell me, how does that feel to release something that sounds like it's coming from a little bit more personal, a little bit more higher stakes? Yeah, it, it's, it, it's definitely, it's, it's scary. It is kind of scary. Um, I've never had to actually answer that for myself. Uh, I just mm -hmm. kind of, I, I had it recorded. Um, I did it all here in the house, just had to have my drum set and my mics and all my guitars and stuff. And just, I, I sat down and had this concept of a song and I just recorded it and I was like, Oh, I just want to have a song to have. And when I really kind of got the concept of Scotty B in the hive going, I was like, uh, I got to release this. And I was, and I just started going through the whole mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. This isn't good enough. It's not going to be good enough. Anybody who I asked to play with me probably doesn't want to do it anyway. And just, I just go through all these, like, you know, I go through these, motions of and I, and I and i have to i just tried to look at it and go I, I, at one point just say bug it like i'm, I'm it. putting it out yes. i'm putting it out there because this is a good message to to give to people too and you know i having I mean, a lot of people have anxiety and, and depressive habits sometimes but this mm -hmm. was basically like allow yourself to take the dive into the deep end but realize you have to come back up for air so come back to us just take the dive, be there, and then come back. Yeah. And so, like, that's why the the chorus hits with "gasp for air, get rid of all the fear," because you've already were you're already down there. Like, you're back. Yeah. Um. So, but the feeling of releasing it is, yeah, it's it's again going through the exact thing what the song is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, a lot of fear and anxiety, but it. I realize it is a part like this is me and this is what I have. This is my path in life. And I would be doing myself a disservice if I just held on to Fort Knox of songs back in that closet. And so I'm just going to release things and, and now not be so scared and actually realize that like, hey, these songs are pretty good. You know, they're okay. I can actually be okay with saying they're, they're pretty good. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad you can sit in that space. And you join us over here, the ones that are listening to it with fresh ears, and you can join us. That's a really good thing. You know, you, you said something, and sometimes I hear something, and it's, it's not like necessarily like I've never heard anyone say that before, but sometimes it's just like the right time. And you just said something about like, you're just, you're just, this is me. This is, I'm just being me. And why wouldn't I release it? And that mm -hmm. just, felt like that kind of rang for me like that's what we all that's what that's what we all do every day <laughs> we get up we get dressed we go out into the world and we're just ourselves and that's about the best we can do I can just give you even what I can give you Scotty in this moment on this show doing what I do this is it <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. There's something so beautiful about how simple it can be. Mm -hmm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. I kind of love that there really is no such thing as perfection. There is no such thing. It, it just needs to be what it is. And so mm -hmm. I think the takeaway is, and on the, and the thing that I'm going to learn from this conversation with you is just like, just do your thing. Just do my, your thing. Yeah, my grandma, uh, good old Southern woman, she always said, get up, dress up, show up. <laughs> yes. Thank you, grandma. <laughs> yeah. Very I mean, it really woman. doesn't need to be much harder than that. It doesn't. And, you know, I learned a lot from my past relationships. And, and one really great thing that I was taught from one of them is from my, my former partners was, uh, you know, we are meaning making machines mm. and thoughts are so loud and they can be so heavy, but at the end of the day, they're thoughts, they're fleeting. We have them. And the only thing we really have to realize 
and I'm not trying to be preachy at all, but this is just my realization through all of this and my anxieties and all that. And the the imposter syndrome and all that, it's just they're they're just thoughts. We have them and they don't have us. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna tattoo that on my forehead. <laughs> Backwards. A little teardrop tattoo. <laughs> yeah, one of those two. Maybe a little neck one too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I could rock a neck tattoo. Oh yeah, those are popular these days. You know, some of them are actually quite pretty. I saw one on a girl, and it was she was gorgeous, and it just suited her so well. And I was like, "No, cat, don't do it." <laughs> like maybe I can. My teenagers would die. <laughs> Maybe mom, Man. no. <laughs> I'm just saying, as someone who has tattoos. I would never get a neck tattoo. Not for the look of it. Just I don't want to sit there having my Adam's apple. Just true. <laughs> I have tattoos yeah. too. I mean, I oh do, yeah, okay. I, I do have a few. I just got one, and my daughter watched it. Watched nice. me get it, and she she loved it. She wants to be a surgeon, so she was like, "Give me oh, blood." That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was unfazed. Unfazed. But, awesome. Yeah, but. I don't know. Yeah, that would, I'm a, I'm what the tattoo artists call a clam. So I, mm. if too much time goes by uh, between me getting tattoos, I will pass out or like almost pass out. I need a pixie stick and a cup of water at, at the ready. <laughs> yep. That's, I, that's fair. I'm, I've been that, I've, I've been that way. I have a tattoo, my first tattoo on my shoulder. It was, it was dumb, not for what it is. It's a beautiful tattoo. It was dumb at 18 years old to get a tattoo about that big Ooh. on my shoulder on my shoulder blade too oh. like so so i just it... sat for four hours never having a tattoo in my life getting a beautiful piece of artwork but sitting there going i'm gonna die <laughs> and then i passed out <laughs> yeah you know like when the volume goes yep it's like tunnel, it's... tunnel vision yeah Ooh. that's why i just i need to keep a steady pace <laughs> Mm-hmm, so I remember sure. the pain, remember it, and just get a bunch of little. I like little ones. I just like to yeah. get little ones. Um, before we before we say goodbye, I know you have mm-hmm. you have something going on on YouTube, right? Where you like yes. drink beer. <laughs> What's yes. happening with that? So and- this is a very niche thing, and I'm glad you I'm glad you brought it up. And I, but I said it to you, and I was like, I watched it. <laughs> should I mention Should I mention this? I'm gonna mention it because it's just yeah. worth mentioning. It's such a niche thing. Me and my bestie. Um, me and my bestie Ryan, we he is a he he's like a twin slash slightly older brother to me. I feel like yeah. we've known each other for I feel like brothers from other mothers. We met in college, and Aww. I've always kind of like looked up to his knowledge and research on everything that he is so passionate about. So beer, talk about a long winded guy. I love him to death, and I, I think he's very self aware of this. And I think he even says stuff like that in the show, but. Basically, we had this really niche idea. I for for a while before the pandemic, I had this uh in Instagram where I would just I was like, well, I like I love craft beer, and I am a freaking guitar pedal nerd. I so I'm gonna pair the two together and just make a really silly niche thing. And at one point, Ryan was like, you know, he knows he does all the time. He's like, you know, <laughs> we should make that a show on YouTube. And I was like, it's not a bad idea. So the first episode, super first couple three are super sure. rough, and I I'm getting my get my we're getting our footing on how to edit and stuff. But it's essentially all we're doing is uh, our 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 hashtag is hashtag uh, stay pretentious. <laughs> so we're super opinionated about pedal, or I'm super opinionated about pedals. He's super opinionated about beer. Nice. So we just essentially rip on pedals and rip on beers and pair them together, and we do a little segment in the middle called the hardcore pour. Where essentially, I will I create a track based off that pedal. I'll play drums, play bass, and put the pedal through its paces. While we do a very slow montage of us pouring the beer, tasting it, making like silly faces, and uh, but we have some new episodes in the can that are that are going to be released probably within the next uh, couple of months. But um, it's just a fun thing I thought to mention because it's it is a little fun side project that him and I like to do. It's called the Electric Pills Nerds. So, the electric um, yeah. pills nerds with a z in there yes yeah it's a, tri- it's a, it's a triple entendre because i <laughs> i'm also silly with that because electric wizard is one of our favorite stoner rock bands um 
Pilsner is a type of beer and we're nerds. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, good. And then, and then you have something coming up with Austin musicians. What's that? You said. Something so about- thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. So I have, uh, you know, instead of like having imposter syndrome and comparing myself to everybody, that's a better guitar player than I am. Um, joking, joking, joking. But I, um, what I've decided to do is I, I really, uh, I'm trying to, I, I want to cr- like kind of give back to the community in some way or another. And the only way I really know how to is, I mean, I have a studio here, full on recording studio, but what I want to do is I want to make tracks um, kind of catered to certain Austin musicians. And essentially what I'll do is I create the track, I play the drums, guitar, bass, and whatever, but I'll have, you know, I'm starting with my guitar player list, but I'm going to call on people in Austin to play over these tracks and show them and and essentially it's all gonna be the same track but they get to kind of insert their personality and for some of the people i know that don't have like a full-on studio or have the time to create a track and show what they can do Mm. it's basically creating like an austin musician resume so i can go hey i have this channel check out these local players they're in all these different bands and the the rubric of it is essentially you know, um, here's the track. All right. This is, you know, cause he is a great guitar player, but like Dave share, this is Dave share. Okay. And it took kind of pans over to Dave and Dave goes, Hey, I'm Dave. I play in these groups. Um, I've toured with Eric Johnson. I've done this. Um, this was a, this was a, a cool track because of this. I approach my guitar solo with this in mind and here's the gear that I'm using. Mm. And then, Hey, it had fun kind of thing uh and then they just play their play their uh solo and you kind of it just highlights all these people i've got i've come to know in the 13 years i've lived here but it's going to be guitar players drummers bass players synth players but i just want to create and it's basically five people per um per per video essentially Mm -hmm. but it's just yeah i want to highlight these people that have helped me get to where i'm at yeah, and just say I thank, know. just thank, just say thank you for knowing them. Basically, yeah, yeah. it's such a great community here. I mm-hmm. I feel like the deeper I get involved, and the more I see in person, especially, and just like, and I always just love, you know, running into. So at ACL with you, there was Joe Valadez standing mm, by. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, Joe! I love him. He's such a great drummer. I know, such a great so drummer. Great. And I love when you guys all sing together in the Howlers and it's like, you guys, it's dynamic. And like, I love it when drummers sing and bass players sing and everyone oh, chimes yeah. in. It's just so musical, but yeah, I love running into people and and going, oh, wow, you know them and you know them and just feels mm-hmm. like a really beautiful family, you know? I will say to kind of conclude on that point for sure. That is the one thing about Austin. I have always admired and loved is that everybody is trying to make it Mm -hmm. some form or another, but we're also grabbing each other's hands and pulling each other in the directions to like, come with us, come with, Hey, I'm going this way. Y'all should play on this bill or Hey, you should do it. It's, it's always been such a supportive, beautiful. I've never felt there's a click in Austin. There's no, there's no bands that are clicky. Yeah. You have your kind of, you have your kind of groups that hang out, sure. but they're always open to meeting more people. And, oh, oh my God, okay, you're Brian, you play it, and it's it's awesome. I can't say yeah. enough great things about this community. Yeah, I know. It makes me so happy. Well, on that note, we're going to say goodbye and thank you so much for coming on. I'm so glad to have been able to see you play and then snag you and go say hi and get your info and start you know just start cultivating that relationship because it's it's just so fun to watch you play and it's um yeah it's just really nice being in your corner and I can't wait to see the things that you do and how you grow and release more music and step out into that it's very exciting I'm happy you're doing it thank you I'm I'm very excited thank you for having me on this is a wonderful opportunity just to kind of get to know you and I've, I've had, enjoyed yeah. every second just getting to know you as well. So thank yeah. you for this opportunity. And I've, yeah, I've had, I've had a great time. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I, like I said, I just love it when I walk into a room and you're there. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm everywhere and nowhere at the same time. I know, I know. And, and, and everyone just, if you get a chance to go see Brian Wolf and the Howlers, go see them. They, I cannot say enough what a pleasant surprise it was to just see how you guys actually perform too. And just the energy and the dynamics of it all. And then also with Cece, who is just, you guys are just rocket flying up and you guys are so different, but so fun to watch too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And cause there's, there's more people in that band, you got the keys, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, it's super, super fun. So if you get a chance, make sure you get to go see Scotty Blanco and his, either one of his bands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scotty, for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Kat. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Pleasure is mine too. All right. That does it for this episode of the Austin Downbeat, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow Scotty Blanco. Um, what's your Instagram again? Is it Scotty B? Oh, it's, yeah, it's Scotty B in the Hive. So it's Scotty, S C O T T Y, B E E, and the Hive. All one long run on sentence. <laughs> Yeah, and show up to gigs, buy the merch, show the support, share, tell your friends, all the things, and we will see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.